Welcome to the Health Fix Podcast, where health junkies get their weekly fix of tips, tools, and techniques to have limitless energy, sharp minds, and fit physiques for life. Hey, health junkies. On this episode of the Health Fix Podcast, I'm talking with mindset coach Natalie Botezatu. Natalie drops some serious value for those of us struggling with getting results when it comes to weight loss, energy, hormones, things of that nature. So Natalie and I talk about procrastination and thoughts getting in the way of our goals. And Natalie gives out some seriously good advice in this episode that you can act on today. So you don't want to miss out on this one especially if you're struggling with weight and energy issues. What's interesting about Natalie is that she spent her entire life pursuing the dream that she thought she wanted to become a doctor. Two years into medical school, she found herself disappointed by the lack of mental health advocacy for patients and for doctors. So she dropped out to pursue helping others Lucky for us, she's here today to help us health junkies get real results with our health goals. Let's introduce you to Natalie Botezatu. Hey, Natalie. Welcome to the Health Fix Podcast. Thank you so much for having me, Janine. I'm so, so happy to be here. Oh, man. I'm so glad that we got connected because mindset is something that I try to convey to my patients since I've learned about it. Because honestly, I didn't realize that it was a thing till probably about let's say six years ago when I was really dealing with some serious anxiety. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. It's not talked about. You don't, you don't learn about it. I mean, even actual health knowledge by itself is so limited in our education system. We just have a PE class, but are we really even taught about health in that class? And then college, maybe <laughs> if you're something specific, but nothing on like actual mindset, mental health. It's, it's not, prioritized by our community. No. And even naturopathic school, unless I miss that week of of class, I'm pretty (laughs) sure even in my training, like, yes, we talked about the mind, body, spirit and things and connections, but we really didn't dive into how our thoughts can really mess up our trajectory in life if we're not aligning things with the thoughts and the doing. And that was one of the really big things that I I wanted to talk about first with you. But before we get to that, I got it. We got to share stories on the podcast. Tell us a little bit about how you ended up being called to be a mindset coach. Yeah. So I've always known that I wanted to help people in some way. And I grew up in a immigrant household. My parents are Romanian. They moved to the States in the 80s. And then I'm a first generation Romanian American. So I grew up in the Midwest. I grew up in Michigan. (laughs) And the best thing that I could do was become a doctor. I'm a child of immigrants. Okay, best thing I can do as a child of immigrants is either become a doctor, a lawyer, or an architect, or a teacher, something that was seen by my parents as this is a good thing for you to do as our child. And so I went on the medical path my whole life. I was like, I'm going to medical school. I'm becoming a doctor. And pretty much everything that I did my entire life was pointed in that direction. I had a couple side hobbies as well. I played the mm-hmm. piano. I've, I've always actually been, even before I went to medical school, I really loved nutrition. I loved learning about the body. I loved uh personal like performance, like brain performance, like biohacking, all of that. I was always very, very into all of that also. And so I went to college, got a major in biology, and then I did a year of diabetes research at University of Michigan. And then I went to medical school for two years. And I was so discouraged by what I was learning. And I was so discouraged how, number one, it, we weren't learning health care. We were learning sick care. That was the truth. And also, there was absolutely no emphasis on mental health. Not just mental health for our patients, but also actual mental health for physicians, which we all know how big of a mental health crisis there is right now for healthcare practitioners. And so here I was in medical school, everyone's like struggling mentally during school and halfway through, I finished my first round of boards and I was like, wait, I need, I need a second. 
So I took a year off. And when I was in college, so a couple years prior to being in medical school, I did start doing health coaching. And I realized that I wanted to just take some time off from medical school for a year. And I was going to just really keep pursuing my health coaching business during that year to make some money, but also to just really connect with what I believed in and apply some of the science-based things that I was learning from medical school to my health coaching. And I did that for a year and I realized I can't go back. I cannot go back to medical school. I can't go back to just killing myself in the process of learning things that I don't actually think really help people. Because during that year of taking time off and pouring into my business, I realized that people were actually really changing, not just short-term changes in terms of weight loss, but also long-term changes in terms of how they felt about themselves, their relationships. And so I realized that the big key to my client's journey during that year wasn't just what they were doing with their nutrition, wasn't just what I was teaching them with how they can work out and not have to just work out for hours and hours in a day to see progress. But it was really the things that they were thinking and how they were prioritizing their mindset alongside their eating habits, their exercise habits. And doing that, it was the mental component that really skyrocketed their results. And so I did that for about a year. And now I, I mainly work with business owners, but my foundational, my business, the foundation of my business was grounded in really teaching people how important their minds are in laying a powerful foundation for physical results, physical health results as well. So I've been doing that for about seven years now. And it was the best decision ever. Everyone thought I lost my, my brains. <laughs> Everyone thought I went absolutely cuckoo bananas for dropping out of medical school and working so hard. I mean, you know, it's it's yeah. hard to get in and everything you go through, it's so grueling. And everyone thought I had just lost it and that I quit. And <laughs> I'm the best decision ever. <laughs> best decision ever. So I've been doing mindset coaching for seven years now and really teaching people how important their thoughts are, their internal world is. In laying a powerful, powerful foundation for everything they want to experience externally, whether it's weight loss, whether it is healing some other type of way physically, whether it is also in all aspects of their life's relationships, career. So that's what I do now. And that's what makes me a mindset coach. <laughs> I I really like look at this whole concept of, of coaching for your mind as a foundation to health. Really. Mm -hmm. I'm and and the trajectory of my practice is very much going towards mindset as the first thing. And then the health things will take care of later. Because like I mentioned already, I had an email this morning that said, why am I so fat? And 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 this is from a long-term patient. And I'm every time, every time I see, you know, emails or I get, uh, you know, people are coming on and they're so frustrated about their weight. And we've been trying to help with the health. I mean, I just get to the point where I'm just like, I don't, uh, you know, we've done all the things. And I'm sure a lot of people listening right now, like I've done all the things for my health. I've done all the things for my hormones. I've done all the things for my gut. And I hear this over and over again. And I'm like, okay, but have we done, you know, we have not in the traditional medical model that unfortunately I still work in because I see insurance patients. I haven't worked on your mindset because I don't have time to do that. Mm -hmm. And and so let's let's talk about this concept of aligning your brain with what you're doing because so many people will cut their calories or they'll be like eating as clean as possible, cut their calories, be working out two a days and they're still not moving the needle on the, the weight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about Every, this. Everyone's doing the right things. I mean, they have you, they have, there's a wealth of information out there. There's so much research out there. I mean, they have all the tools. They're doing all the right things, but it's what is preceding their action taking that is getting in the way of the action taking. So what I mean by that is I created this success equation. I mean, I guess I don't know if I created it, but I, I put <laughs> made it tangible to help people realize that most of the time we're looking at what do I need to do to experience X result? So what mm -hmm. do I need to do? to have more energy, let's say. Mm -hmm. They're like, I need to sleep more. I need to eat this nutritious food. I need to make sure I exercise this amount. 
I need to make sure that I am maybe taking the, these supplements, a lot of vitamin C, let's say th this is what I need to do to get to where I want to be. And they're just focused on do, do, do to achieve, achieve, achieve. It's a very external focused. We're trying to some find something outside of us to utilize, to implement, to then get us to where we want to be. But whether you consciously recognize it or not, preceding all of your action taking is a set of thoughts. And those thoughts are going to fuel how you feel. So my success equation that I teach to all of my clients is the way that you think influences how you feel. Then how you feel is going to influence how you take action. And then the action that you take from those thoughts and feelings then are going to fuel your results. So whether you consciously recognize it or not, there are always going to be thoughts or feelings preceding your action taking. And if those thoughts and feelings are not supportive, your action taking is not going to take you as far as you'd like. And also those thoughts and feelings might even get in the way of you taking action consistently. So let me give you an example. Let's use the example, I want more energy. And so if I'm constantly doing the things that Dr. Janine is telling me and I'm eating the food, but every time I eat the food, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I'm so exhausted all the time. Oh my gosh, I don't know if this, if I don't know if having energy is meant for me oh my goodness, I'm such a failure because I'm only doing 80% of what Dr. Janine told me. And mm -hmm. we're thinking thoughts that are constantly going against the thing that we want or thoughts of doubt or thoughts of fear of like, oh my gosh, can I really do this? Oh my gosh, am I ever going to have energy? Oh my gosh, is energy in the cards for me? Am I, am I meant to have it? Am I just one of those people who's going to be drained of energy their whole lives? Is this my destiny? And we're always thinking thoughts that are negatively impacting the results that we want. And those thoughts, they feel icky, constantly feeling like you're not allowed to have energy when you're doing all the things to get you the energy that you want. That feels icky. And then when you're showing up to eat the food and you're thinking, even though the food is like, yeah, this is nutritiously dense food, this is going to help you with your energy. But in your head, you're thinking, I'm so tired. I'm so tired. I'm so tired. I'm never going to get not tired. I'm never going to have energy. Then the way that your body is digesting this food is backed by these thoughts of I don't get to have energy. And then of course, then your results are going to show differently versus if when you're thinking thoughts of i believe that energy is meant for me i'm seeing little bursts of energy pop up every day i'm so excited to continue to see progress that feels different that feels more expansive and then when you show up to do your workout you're doing it with a little bit more energy you're like oh actually you know what i i'm feeling a little good. i'm feeling a little better than i did yesterday okay we got this and then maybe you're showing up and you're being even more intentional with your workout. And then guess what? When you evaluate your energy levels next month, they're higher. But it really all originates with what you're expecting, what you're thinking, and how you're feeling before you're taking the action to change your energy levels or support your physical health in some way. So that's a little overview on how there's a connection between the internal world, which is your thoughts and your feelings, and how they're going to precede your action taking and how then that can then fuel your results in a positive way or in a not so positive way. Hmm. I could see that, you know, with fatigue, I could see it with weight loss too, because every time you're eating, you're like, this food's going to make me fat or I'm not getting results. I mean, I can see this in, in the whole spin. Now, if we do take it over to career and being an entrepreneur and business choices, because I think for a lot of people, career, business choice, side hustle, and, mm -hmm. and really wanting to, to do something we love and make it work, I think that for a lot of people causes a lot of health issues too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so not aligning your thinking with what you're doing in your business, does this have to you know, like explain how that tweaks into the business of, of things. How does that work? Yeah, I do believe everything in life is connected. So even though I do primarily work with business owners, entrepreneurs on their mindsets, 
a lot of the times the reason that their business isn't going the way that they want it to is because there are mismatches in how they're thinking in another area of life. So if you are really struggling with weight loss or hormone regulation or energy levels, something that we're going to look at, we're not, we're not just going to look at your, your health. We're going to look at how are you not supporting yourself well in your career and everything. I really do believe that if you, in your career, you're constantly feeling like you can't get ahead. Mm -hmm. If you constantly feel like you're not where you want to be, if you constantly feel like you are just struggling and maybe you're some imposter syndrome and procrastination constantly in your career, then chances are we're going to see signs of that also within your health as well. And so sometimes I really love to get people an access point. So if someone's really struggling with their mindset and their health, Sometimes it's easier for us to change their mindset in their career first mm -hmm. and help them to start feeling different and seeing things different there. And then we'll transfer that those elements, those um, principles from their career, we'll transfer it into health. Or sometimes mm -hmm. we'll do it vice versa. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we need to see proof of something and proof of results or proof of a concept working in one area of life in order to see it in a different area of life. I've done it with relationships. Like I realized that um, I was blocking a lot in my romantic relationships mentally. And as soon as I started really working on that, then my business just skyrocketed once I cleared that. So it's really just noticing that the way that I think is laying a foundation for what I experience. And if you are constantly thinking thoughts of, I'm not good enough at my job, I'm never going to get that promotion, I am going to be struggling financially forever, then chances are there's an area of opportunity for you there to shift the way that you think. And we're not saying, let's go to outer space with optimism here, not just saying, I'm the best salesperson on the planet. I am a multi-million dollar multi-millionaire salesperson because you might not be there just yet. We can set the sights on that at some point in the future, but just having it having your thoughts shift to just feeling a little bit better than the previous icky thoughts were that <laughs> is an area of improvement and I really believe in small steps because small steps add up to to big strides. And when you just shift, instead of thinking, I'm always going to struggle in my business or I'm always going to struggle in my career to, you know what, I'm struggling a little bit now, but I'm actually not struggling as much as I did last year. So you know what, there's progress. Mm -hmm. There's a progress for me. You know what, I, I, I can do this. It can get better little by little by little. And sometimes just noticing that and thinking that as I'm saying it, I'm like, oh, I get like chills. I'm like, oh, that just feels so much better <laughs> than the previous icky thought. Just that feeling alone is going to support you in showing up even more powerfully during your business meetings, managing your team. But then also, guess what? Then when it comes to showing up for your exercise, eating a well-balanced meal, you're going to also start learning that you let me have some more progress thoughts. Let me have just a little bit more thoughts that are more hopeful, thoughts that are more expansive with this. It's just going to be so much easier because you're not constantly carrying this weight from your business or from your career. And that's no longer going to be as heavy. So then of course, it's going to be so much easier for you to be well rested, do what you need to do with your nutrition and your workouts. Gosh. You know, the little thoughts. I've taken a lot of different mindset and, and different courses, you know, for the mind to help with, with making progress, especially with the business. And, you know, yeah, you're, you're talking about like when people have to write out repetitive thoughts that you're supposed to be thinking like, I'm going to make $10 million this year, whatever, you know. my I laugh because my brain's like, yeah, right. You know, and so that's kind of, I can see how that plays out for folks when it's a too big of, a, a change, a shift. And I think mm -hmm. the same thing goes with health too. If we pick two biggest shifts, because so many people, weight loss, you know, I want to lose 50 pounds. Well, and two weeks later, why haven't I lost 50 pounds? It's like, 
We don't want to lose 50 pounds in two weeks. That's not going to be the best for you. Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Right, right. It's crazy. It's Hey, health junkies. If your feet aren't happy and healthy, the rest of you could suffer from low back pain all the way up to neck pain. And yes, even gut issues can be related to your feet because your feet are connected to your nervous system. Happy feet equal one less thing the nervous system has to worry about. I want to tell you about Paluva. This is a new zero drop minimalist shoe with the distinctive five toe design. Paluvas give you the most authentic barefoot style experience, but with sufficient cushioning to use in everyday movement, fitness, and athletic activities. Paluvas are super stylish, so you also get a barefoot shoe that looks good too. Paluvas are a step ahead of every other zero drop wide box shoe because they feature separate slots for each of your five toes. So if you've been using toe separators, you can ditch them and just wear the Paluvas. Those individual slots for each toe allow for correct dynamic movement of the foot through the walking or running stride, which is important when toes are encased in a single box, even a wide box. Now, minimalist shoes have faced controversy in recent years about causing injuries from inappropriate use. So you want to get walking in Paluvas, living in Paluvas, and doing whatever you can while you're going barefoot in your home and safe areas as much as possible. So... Go ahead and use your specialized running shoes, basketball shoes, work boots, high heels when you need to, but wear Paluvas as much as possible to reawaken the natural functionality of the human foot to stand, walk, run, and perform. Try a pair of Paluvas with no risk and you'll quickly realize that these are the most comfortable shoes you've ever worn. They're designed to feel like you're walking barefoot on clouds. So visit Paluva, P-E-L-U-V-A dot com and take 15% off with the code HEALTHFIX. Let's get back to the podcast. Crazy. So, you know, one of the things that, that you mentioned was procrastination. Mm -hmm. And I find that procrastination for a lot of my entrepreneurial clients, myself included, seems to be one of those things where we can procrastinate with food like related back to diet. And we can procrastinate with all kinds of different things and not end up getting towards the direction we want to go. Can you give some insight into a little bit more into procrastination, how that ties into mindset, even though like people are like, but procrastinating, how's that mindset? Like I'm just procrastinating. Yeah. yeah so procrastination, it also originates, like if we think about what exactly is it is when we put off doing what we know we should be doing and we find excuses for that. Mm -hmm. And if you really if you think about it, think about it, that pattern is originating in here. It's not a, it's not an external roadblock or an external problem. It's an internal problem. So if it's something that originates in your mind, then of course it's a, a mindset issue. It's the same with feeling like an imposter. It's the same as anxiety. It's the same as doubt. Where do these things originate? These things that get in the way of us doing the things we need to do in here. So there are signs of all around us, but people don't necessarily know like, oh, okay, it's a mindset issue because it, it originates in here. So there's areas of opportunity there to shift. So with procrastination in particular, it's a pattern and it's really just a protective pattern. I know a lot of people are like, I just need to stop procrastinating. I just need to stop putting things off. I just need to be better at managing my time. Again, they are looking for an external mm -hmm. solution for something that's originating in here. But really, the way that you really kick procrastination to the curb is first recognizing that, okay, it's a mental thing, a mental roadblock, a mental pattern. Number two, recognizing that it's a protective pattern. It's not something that we have to be resentful of. Actually, when I realize that, oh, procrastination is trying to protect me in some way, so I can, instead of being upset at myself for procrastinating, I can maybe understand a little bit why I'm procrastinating and be a little bit more kind to myself in the process of trying to shift it. And so with procrastination, it's a protection mechanism because oftentimes the thing that we are aiming for is outside of our comfort zone. The thing that we want, which is weight loss, more energy, expansive business, is something that we haven't had before or maybe something that we didn't maintain before. And that's often outside of our comfort zone. And we still very much operate as a species with deeply ingrained protective mechanisms. 
-hmm. we still don't go outside of the norm. Like I had the biggest anxiety episode that first year that I dropped out of medical school. I had more anxiety than I've ever had in my life. Consciously, I'm like, of course I want to drop out. Of course I want to start this business. Of course I know I'm going to be even more successful and help even more people than I ever could in the medical system. Consciously, I was like, yeah, I can do this. But subconsciously, my internal protective system, I just was in fight or flight all the time. I was like, oh my God, what is she doing? Oh my gosh, she's away from her family. Oh my gosh, she's going to struggle. Oh my gosh, she's our brain immediately goes to, oh my gosh, she's in danger. Her mm -hmm. life. So whenever we step outside of our comfort zone, this could be big things like life altering careers, but this can also be not so big things like finally becoming healthy, finally supporting your hormones, finally working on the weight loss journey that you know you can achieve. But it's unfamiliar because it's new. It's outside of where you are at now. So even though where you're at now is not where you want to be, let's say you want to lose 20 pounds and that's your goal. Where you're at now is still comfortable. There's a part of you that's comfortable within, within the body that you're at now, not because you want to be here simply because it's familiar. So whenever we are having an action plan with our nutrition or with our workouts or with our hormones or whatever that might be, where we are going is still unfamiliar from where we're at. And even though we might be swimming in health problems, we might be swimming in just lack of energy and our hormones totally out of whack. It's still comfortable because it's familiar because we've gotten used to being anxious. We've gotten used to being overweight. We've gotten used to being stressed. And even though we don't want to be stressed and overweight, we're still used to it. So what our brain will do as a protective mechanism, it'll use things like procrastination to keep us in the familiar because we associate the familiar with safety, a certain level of safety. But really, it's just a protection mechanism based on your current awareness. It's not actually a conscious choice. It's usually just a subconscious protective mechanism saying, this is familiar. This is safe. Let's stay here. Let's stay overweight. Let's stay drained of energy. Let's stay here. We, we know how to be overweight. We know how to be stressed. So let's stay here. This is just how I am. You hear people say that all the time. It's not how you are. It's just how you've gotten comfortable to be. So procrastination will be the thing that pops up to just give you a little like a little tap to your head and say, mm, actually, you know what? We'll eat that meal later. Or, oh, you know what? We'll postpone our workout to later. Or, oh, you know what? We'll do this health assessment later. It's fine. But really, it's a very sneaky, subtle way for our brain to keep us in the familiar, to keep us in our comfort zone. So the way that we start shifting that procrastination, whether it's in health or in career, everything that I teach is really applicable to all areas mm -hmm. of life. So yeah. please take what you're hearing here and apply it appropriately to any aspect of your life. But the way that we start shifting procrastination is by recognizing, even though there's a part of me that feels that where I'm at now is safe, where I want to go is actually even safer. Where I want to go is actually even more wonderful than where I'm at now. And so this is where mindset work really is so powerful and should be non-negotiable for a lot of people is recognizing that when you set your sights on a goal, your brain will try to sabotage it because your brain thinks that where you're going is not safe and uncomfortable. But if you, on a regular basis, tell your brain, tell yourself, tell your heart, tell your soul, tell your inner child, whatever you want to call it, tell your subconscious mind that, hey, I know that it's a little scary where we're going. Mm -hmm. Weight loss and actually being like really feeling very comfortable in our bodies and feeling sexier and more energized than ever. I know that that might feel really foreign, but you know what? It's still safe. And making sure that as we are implementing that new workout routine, implementing that new nutrition protocol, starting to do the new sales tactics, starting to do the new lead generation, starting to really grow that new business, 
alongside that, we are regularly telling our brain, hey, I know this is a little scary. I know you want to procrastinate on some things to keep us safe, but we're safe. There's even more safety on the other side of this. There's even more safety in your goals. There's even more safety. There's even more protection. There's even more expansion on the other side of this. Trust me, we got this. You're safe. You're protected all as well. I love you. I'm proud of you. Keep going. Mm -hmm. You're safe. You're safe. You're safe. You're safe. And so really all of this is an internal conversation of teaching ourselves to really not listen to the protective mechanism that procrastination wants to the narrative that that wants to speak and overriding that and saying, Hey, I have a new protection narrative and we don't need procrastination <laughs> to kick in, to keep us safe. I can remind myself that I'm safe no matter what. And I'm also safe continuously as I pursue these different health desires and career desires that I have. That is so profound because mm -hmm. the safety thing, this is where I have, you know, racked my brain a little bit on how do I help someone feel safe, right? How do we, what do we do? Because a lot of it's abstract because a lot of people are like, well, I have a roof over my head. There's no bear chasing. I am I am good, you know? And and so the concept of like, I have to tell my body it's safe seems abstract. But yet at the same time, how you're saying it, like each time something comes up, having like a mantra or something of that nature, is that what you use? Like mantras and, and different Affirmations, things? Affirmations, true statements, whatever you want to call them. It's really something that hits home with the part of you that is trying to listen to the procrastination instead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. so many of us experience kind of the emotional roller coasters throughout the day and the dysregulated kind of emotions, especially going through perimenopause and menopause because the hormones are shifting. And so mm -hmm. a lot of people will be like, it's just my hormones, right? And I'm like, I wish we could blame it all on your hormones. There's some folks out there that are touting, you know, bioidentical hormones as solving all your problems. And unfortunately, I don't want, I mean, people are believing that. And unfortunately, I need to kind of step back and go, no, no, no. I wish, yeah. I wish. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so with the dysregulated emotions and, and the nervous system, is it the same concept kind of going back to the affirmations, finding out what works for you, finding your groove? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it doesn't have to be super crazy complicated. I always like to make the uh, comparison to brushing your teeth. Mm -hmm. In order to have a great smile, to have really good oral care, you just need to brush your teeth two times a day and floss every day. And it really only takes a few minutes. I just went to the dentist last week and she's like, oh my gosh, your oral care is amazing. I was like, thanks. I just stick with the basics. I spend like five minutes a day on my teeth, but I do it regularly and I do it religiously. And- mm -hmm. Same as with our mental health and with our mindsets and really having something foundational that is supporting us and pouring into us and allowing us to shift the way that we feel on a consistent basis. Because I think anyone can say a mantra. Anyone can say an affirmation. Let's use a very simple one. That's like, let's just use I am safe. Mm -hmm. That's really sure. If I say I'm safe, I'm safe, I am safe. That has some power to it. But if when I'm saying I am safe, I'm closing my eyes. And I'm imagining and really feeling into how supported I am, how every time in the past when it seems like just crazy stuff happened and things went super haywire, that still somehow it worked out. Yeah, sure. Maybe there was pain. Sure. Maybe there was struggle. But still, I'm, I'm still here. Like you said, I have a roof over my head. I'm supported. Mm -hmm. When I say I am safe, I feel into how truly supported I am and how I'm really, truly safe, not just physically, but emotionally, maybe even spiritually for some people who connect with that. When I say I am safe and I really feel into what that means for me, because it's going to mean something very different for me than it means for you. If you are taking one minute to just sit in that feeling of safety every single day and then co brush your teeth, then <laughs> show up to work, then go do your workout, then eat your breakfast. It's going to be a completely different emotional experience, which is then going to translate into, sorry, my dog's knocking things down. <laughs> and it's a really wonderful physical experience. But it all starts with how we're thinking, but also how we're feeling alongside those thoughts. So a mantra, an affirmation, I would say if there are one or two things that if 
your best friend reminded you of every day that would give you a boost, what would those things be? And tell yourself those things. It can be in regards to your career, your health. And not just tell yourself those things, maybe write them down, but make sure you're also feeling into what you're saying. And just sitting in those, that's why for a lot of people, visualization works really well because it allows them to access feelings. For other people, maybe they're more, I'm really big on learning styles. So maybe it's writing your affirmations. Maybe it's saying your affirmations. Once I had my brother um, do a recording of saying my affirmations for me, and he did it like in a really goofy, fun way. So I was like, oh, these are great. Mm -hmm. So maybe you're learner and having that, but really having these mantras be something or affirmations that it really just takes one to five minutes a day, but we're really laying a powerful foundation for how do I want to think today? What mental foundation do I want to set for all the actions that I'm going to take today? And it really doesn't have to take very long at all. Wow. Just every single day starting in off right so that your body knows you're safe and, and you're going to do things a little bit differently today. Mm -hmm. It's going to be scary. You might mm. feel like you're peeing your pants. You might even pee your pants a little bit. <laughs> That's okay. But you're safe. And having an internal, creating an internal support system has been such a game changer for me and for so many of my clients. And it really allows you to then allow the good to stay, allows the weight loss to stay because you feel safe in your body. Because a lot of people actually gain weight because they don't actually feel safe in the weight it keeps them safe. Mm -hmm. um, or a lot of people won't allow themselves to actually continue maintaining business success because they feel unsafe having more money. Mm -hmm. But if you can really cultivate an internal safety system, that's how I really think mindset work is one of the biggest components to sustainable weight loss, sustainable financial growth, sustainable healthy relationships, because you are creating, you are your own biggest fan. You are your own support system. You are your own internal compass for safety. And you can really allow the things that you desire to stay because you have built a practice of making sure that you're telling the inner voice that wants to disrupt that, that, hey, we're safe. So one of the best things you can do for just sustaining the progress that you really ultimately want. Hmm. I think that's pretty sage advice because so many people are thinking for the external, you know, grasping at things externally for the safe, right? Or even just for comfort, and, mm -hmm. and, you know, to, to use that as, a, as an example. And having your own internal safety system leads me back to when I first interviewed a gal years ago on my podcast, and she brought up the concept of the vagus nerve mm -hmm. and, and your fight or flight nerve that's constantly sensing everything. And- you know, she had said to me, we have to find a way to tell ourselves we're safe and like, like all is clear. And I pondered that for a long time and, and have worked with multiple folks on, on trying to explain how, how this works, right? Because a lot of people are like, well, mantras, you know, et cetera, what do I do? But being able to create your own system. So mm -hmm. I'm guessing that yes, mantras can be one thing. Yes, the affirmations that your brother recorded. I'm thinking like, is like the higher level of this creating multiple things that work for you and finding like a tool, like a tool chest of things that you can draw upon? Yeah. yeah, I'm a big proponent of don't just do what someone else is telling you to do. Make sure that you're doing something that really connects with you and your values and your lifestyle. Like me, I am I have fur babies. I don't have human <laughs> babies. So my mindset routine is going to look very different now than if I was a mom who had four children running around all the time and sure. being super busy in my life, just being different than it is now. And so really making sure that how you are crafting this experience is unique to you and to your lifestyle and to your values. And also making sure that it makes sense to you. So for example, I had a client who was very science background, which I, um, I'm a science nerd as well, but I know that sometimes that can get a little too much for people. But for her mantras and her affirmations, we really made the connection of when you are saying these, or when you're writing these, you're also taking very deep breaths. And when you're taking these very deep breaths, you're stimulating your diaphragm. And what runs through your diaphragm? Your vagus nerve. The vagus nerve runs through your diaphragm. So you are actively stimulating 
your parasympathetic nervous system with these deep breaths and you're really leaning into parasympathetic and you're also saying these mantras. And so it's really just affecting your brain and your body on a whole new level to say these in a calming state to really affect your body in a different way than just saying them blindly or maybe saying them while you're on a run and you're in like full sympathetic mode. So however you need to kind of shift it to make it make sense for you, I would recommend doing that. And for some people, it's while you're brushing, like if you're a busy mom, busy parent, while you're brushing your teeth. And I would put a sticky note on my mirror. I did this once during while I was in medical school, actually, when things are just really crazy. I didn't have too much time for much of anything, but I would have my sticky notes on the mirror or I would go during bathroom breaks and I would sit and I would do a, I'm a big fan of Headspace, the meditation app. I don't know if anyone's familiar with that, but I would, there are three minute mini meditations and I would take a potty break between classes and I would go and I would literally sit in a bathroom stall, put my headphones in and listen to this three minute, three minute meditation and really make sure that I was pouring into my mind in those times. So it doesn't have to be perfect. doesn't have to be this crazy, super high tech, complicated <laughs> system, it can really be something that's very simple and something that allows you to really feel into what you're saying and something that that also fits your life. Oh my goodness. <sighs> that's refreshing. That's refreshing. Mm -hmm. Something simple. Cause I think we have a lot of complicated protocols out there that just overwhelm people. So mm -hmm. I'm guessing in your mindset kickstart that you are kind of offering some of these things and more. Tell us a little bit about that. And then of course, we got to tell folks where to find you and all of those of things. Of course. Yes. So my Mindset Kickstart course, which I would love to gift to everyone and all of your listeners who've listened to this podcast or listen all the way to the end here. So if if they want this Mindset Kickstart course, I, I think I shared it with you. Mm -hmm. You can send it out to them, but they can also reach out to me I'm, and just mention the health fix and I can send it to them as well. But the Mindset Kickstart course is really just teaching you to bridge that gap between your internal world and your external world. And how can we really get in the process practice of creating some really powerful mental habits that are going to support the action that we want to take. And I actually, in the, in the mindset kickstart course, I go through how to do it in health, how to do it in relationships and how to do it in career. So feel free to take all three or feel free to just apply whatever one you feel like you're really wanting to work on and really going through how can I identify some thoughts that are most supportive, but how can I also make sure that I'm shifting into the feelings of those things? And how can I really see that these thoughts are going to impact my outcomes very differently than more elevated thoughts, more negative thoughts, more icky thoughts, and really making that connection with how are my thoughts directly impacting my goals and the results and the action that I'm taking. So I go through that in the mindset kickstart course. And, um, and it's, it really is the most foundational course that I've created. And I talked about a few of the things here during mm -hmm. our conversation, but also it really makes it even more visual if you're a visual learner, and gives it you more of a step by step to create a small routine, very simple routine that you can do regularly. And you can really implement and it doesn't have to take a lot of time. And you can really start laying a powerful mental foundation for any of the goals that you have. Mm, that's awesome. That's awesome. Now you also have your free Facebook group and you have, you know, folks can work with you one-on-one -on -one as well. Mm -hmm. So let's mm -hmm. tell them about that. Tell them about your website. And by the way, guys, I'm going to have everything at drjkrausnd.com too, but let's, let's give them all the details and all the other ways they can interact with you. Sure. You can just uh, search my name on Instagram, which is N-A-T-H-A-L-I-E-B-O-T-E-Z-A-T-U. It'll, I'm sure it'll be in the notes. Just search my name on Instagram. You can find me on there. And then also on Facebook, the same name. I do have a free Facebook group. It's called Activating Success Community, where I do do twice a month free teachings. It's specifically geared towards business owners. But again, I have people who are in the nursing field, in the engineering field that take what I teach in there and really teaching you how to continue to up-level your mindset alongside the business strategies that you're taking. So if you feel a little bit more pulled to the entrepreneur business side of things, 
that Facebook group is going to be a really great resource for you. So just either reach out to me either via Facebook or Instagram and say, hey, I'd love to be added to the Activating Success Facebook group. I'd be more than happy to add you on there. And yeah, if you have any questions or anything that you need, feel free to just reach out either on Instagram or Facebook. Those are my top two places that I am. Awesome. Natalie, thank you so much for coming on and sharing so much information. It's it's refreshing for me to hear that there are simple solutions for helping us feel safe and moving forward with our mindset and kind of aligning ourselves a lot better to get what we want in life and feel good about it. Yeah. Yeah. That's the biggest key, just really feeling good about it and not feeling intimidated by it, feeling overwhelmed by it. It can really be so simple and it can make a, a big, big impact really quickly. Ah, good stuff here. Thanks, Natalie. Well, thank you so much for having me. Hey, Health Junkies. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of the Health Fix podcast. To help support my mission to bring you tips, tricks, and tools to help you optimize your health, I'd be grateful if you'd like, subscribe, and write me a review for the podcast. And if you hear a product you're interested in on the podcast, you can now go over to my website to learn more. That's doctor spelled out J K R A U S E nd.com. Just click on shop and you'll find all the information on my favorite products that I stand behind and use myself. All affiliate income earned with your purchases goes directly to help support the production of the podcast so I can keep bringing you quality health information. I appreciate your support and I'm honored to have you listening to my podcast as a fellow health junkie. Thanks again. Hey, fellow health junkie, thanks for listening to the Health Fix podcast. If you enjoyed tuning in, please help support me to get the word out about the podcast. Subscribe, rate, and review, and just get that word out. Thanks again for listening.